Tiffany Stratton just went viral for turning something down. We'll also see what's going on with Charlotte Flair, AJ Styles, and more. Starting things off with the news for AJ Styles because this has been a popular conversation for several weeks now. AJ Styles spent the last few months of the year as a desperate heel that was scratching and clawing for one last WWE title reign before his retirement. Unfortunately for him, he was unable to capture the title during the last few attempts. AJ appeared for a bit following his feud with Cody Rhodes, but he just returned and telling by the feeling of his first promo back, it definitely seems like he was transitioning into a babyface role again. AJ was confronted by Carmelo Hayes. They agreed to a match on the spot, but the match couldn't be completed due to a lower leg injury for AJ Styles. Now, when this initially happened, fans didn't know what to think. The initial thought was that it was probably a storyline injury. WWE even showed camera footage of AJ backstage with the trainer and even put in their SmackDown recap graphics that AJ got injured. So some fans were thinking this must have been storyline related in some way. But as the days went on, it seemed like it was a real injury. One fan took to Twitter to say that they're not buying the rumors that AJ's really hurt and how they believe it's story related injuries. Well, that's when AJ responded to the fan himself and revealed that it was real and how he's dealing with a Liz Frank injury. Now, when it comes to this type of injury, it all comes down to the severity of the individual case. For minor versions of this injury, the individual could be fully recovered in six to eight weeks. But in more severe cases and ones that require surgery, you could be looking at anywhere from four months to a full year. The information and details on AJ's specific case right now is extremely bare, so it's very difficult to predict a recovery time frame for him. The injury does come at an unfortunate time because AJ has been very vocal about wanting to wrap up his time in the ring and retire soon. And it looks like this was the path WWE was getting him ready for, especially considering the babyface turn. But it looks like that farewell run for AJ will have to be put on the back burner, at least for the time being. Charlotte Flair has been a name that's been popping up more and more lately as her return inches closer to the day. Charlotte tore her ACL back in December 2023, and the average recovery time frame for that injury is anywhere from 6 to 9 months. And just a matter of weeks, Charlotte will be entering month 11 of her recovery, which is way past the average recovery time frame. So fans just know that her medical clearance has to be coming literally any day now. There was some light rumors over the summer that there was some big return plans in store for Charlotte in the final months of 2024. But then more reports came out after that buzz was going around, claiming that no plans are in talks for Charlotte and how they'll only be made once she's medically cleared. But during Backstage Pass, Russell Votes made a big claim ahead of time for WrestleMania. They claim that they're hearing Charlotte Flair will be a big focal point for the women's scene at WrestleMania 41. And that does seem like it could turn out to be true. Charlotte has had a bit of a roller coaster ride with WrestleMania in recent years. She missed WrestleMania 37 for creative issues. She successfully defeated Ronda Rousey at WrestleMania 38. She lost to Rhea Ripley at WrestleMania 39 and obviously missed WrestleMania 40 due to injury. So by the time WrestleMania 41 rolls around, that would make two years since she last competed on that big stage. So it does look like 2025 will be Charlotte's big return to the WrestleMania stage and the world title picture as well. Technically, Charlotte is a WWE free agent that could sign to either brand, but common sense tells us she'll be going to SmackDown since her husband's already there. So it looks like this alleged big plan for Charlotte Flair at WrestleMania 41 is going to include the WWE women's title for sure. And that's an idea we spoke about a few weeks back, and these new reports appear to be leaning in that direction. The only question left to ask is, who will be the WWE women's champion by the time both WrestleMania 41 and Charlotte roll into town? As of this moment, it's looking like the two big candidates to be the major WrestleMania 41 opponent for Charlotte is Tiffany Stratton or Nia Jax. And like we've spoken about before, you got two beautiful stories right there with both of those opponents. Nia Jax is a longtime gritty career long rival for Charlotte. 
so seeing them reignite that feud would be great to see. And for Tiffany Stratton, Charlotte is literally her inspiration and role model. So that would be a story of teacher versus student, present versus future. So when you hear these reports about big plans being in store for Charlotte Flair in 2025, you got to assume that we'll see one or maybe even both of those feuds with Charlotte take place on SmackDown next year, and maybe even start in 2024 if she returns before the end of the year. Tiffany Stratton has a lot going on right now within her storylines, but she recently went viral for a moment that took place at a recent live event. While in the UK for WWE's tour, Tiffany came across a fan that had a sign about proposing to her. Tiffany took the sign and ripped it in half while claiming that she's already taken. Tiffany, of course, was referring to her current partner, Ludwig Kaser. That couple was initially very private about their status together, but they're starting to post more about each other, and even here in this instance where Tiffany is referring to him in the middle of a live event. So that moment went viral for so many different reasons. But switching back to Tiffany's storyline, obviously all eyes are on Tiffany heading into the Crown Jewel event. There's going to be a match where both women's champions are going to beat each other down. It's every single Money in the Bank holder's biggest dream scenario. So speaking from a storyline point of view, it just seems like Tiffany Stratton has to at least attempt to cash in at Crown Jewel. Maybe she goes all the way with the cash in, maybe she doesn't, but she has to at least attempt it during the scenario because it truly writes itself there. WWE has been building the tension between Tiffany and Nia for a long time now, with the main hook being that everyone is waiting for that partnership to implode from within. Tiffany did miss the October 18th edition of SmackDown after calling in and telling Nia Jax that she was dealing with the flu. Now WWE made Tiffany's absence feel a bit ambiguous because there was no way to tell if she was telling the truth or not. When you watch that segment back, you can argue that Nia does sell it, as if this is the plan that Tiffany and herself came up with, just to get the both of them out of their previously scheduled tag team match against Bailey and Naomi. But the match ends up happening with Candice filling in for Tiffany. But then, Tiffany doesn't even come out during the match to cause outside interference like she usually does. So it's looking like Tiffany truly wasn't at the event, and there's no clear explanation why. Maybe she was legitimately sick, maybe it was travel issues, or maybe this is just the way creative had it done. But despite whatever the real reason was, WWE can still spin the situation and use it to drive Tiffany and Nia further apart from each other. When Nia needed Tiffany for the tag team match, she was nowhere to be found. Not only absent, but Nia ended up losing the tag team match as well. So it does set up lots of reasons for Nia to only be even more angry towards Tiffany Stratton overall. So expect big things to be even more intense there. But what are your thoughts on today's stories? Leave your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe with all notifications on and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, guys.